good evening everyone uh, a quick introduction of myself dr mukul mohindra your orthopedic instructor here at an academy so please just raise your thumb to let me know that the audio visual is okay okay so just 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 write down all right fine okay whatsoever to let me know that everything is fine you can hear me you can see me perfect enough so i would need to make some changes okay so is the audio visual okay fine enough guys i think bit of problem from my end but i think everything is okay and you guys are now able to connect with me yeah perfect enough thank you jen for letting me know and i think now it's good enough for me to get started so your thumb is up so let me just start with this neat pg 2022 the orthopedic analysis so you've been through this exam and the orthopedic part i think was easy enough i'm sure you might not have found many challenges uh in case you attended your clinics well and your classes well well what my opinion is regarding this exam that it was an exam that was based a lot upon the practical points the examiner expected you that you would have attended your classes your clinics and you know you dealt with the patient in the practical manner there were reasonably good number of images and the questions were more or less clinical questions rather than one liners this was the classical pattern you know what i observed and i think this is what the pattern is going to be for the next exam so it was again that next level type of a pattern collaborating multiple branches an examiner could have simply told you the diagnosis he wanted you to look at the x ray and make the diagnosis and then decide a plan he gave you some real emergency scenario situations asked you to act on them okay so your response was being observed in the exam actually to assess your practical training and i think all further exams are just going to follow the same pattern i'll take you through some of the questions you know uh, the pattern in which they were asked so i suppose uh okay so yeah yeah they they, they tried yes hemal you are right so they made a trial on you so that's how they made a trial on you a boy came to your opd he had a fall on the shoulder he was riding his bicycle so i've just repurposed that same image that's given here okay so when he came to you he was holding this right hand with his left hand i suppose this was all mentioned to you and you were asked what is the most likely injury that has been sustained by him so by and large you know examiner has given you that concept based clinical question where a clinical history is depicted to you and you have to pick up the answer now if if someone would land up with the injury right in the shoulder the areas that could fracture first to fall the proximal humerus now proximal humerus would not just fracture in this age group at all these are classically fractures of the old age now these are fractures that are classically linked to osteoporosis and finding a proximal humerus fracture in a young person needs a high velocity trauma high speed accident and if you see there's just a slight fall from the bicycle a cycle cannot be high speed so indirectly the examiner was telling you this is not the answer so was it a fracture of scapula was it a fracture of acromion let me share my opinion on it in a fracture of scapula and in a fracture of acromion movements are generally comfortable relatively comfortable so this particular scenario where you are holding a hand with your hand would generally not be required so this indirectly tells you that likely the examiner was talking about a fracture of the clavicle okay see this bone clavicle connects the upper limb with the chest and you can very well imagine if the clavicle is broken the connection of upper limb with the chest is gone so 
so maybe that's why you know holding the hand was getting difficult and the person was holding the hand okay is one hand with the other hand so clear enough so clavicle would have been the best pick and maybe had that x-ray been clicked it would have been something like this okay another one right from the emergency room a patient sustained an injury around the ankle and his x-ray was shown to you and i suppose somewhat like this was shown to you you could see some fracture around the ankle where the medulla were broken and you know the ankle was going almost into a state of dislocation so this was indirectly telling you that this is now a high velocity trauma because there's a bad dislocation that's come up at the ankle so this would have been actually a serious injury case so here you were asked about the management part so what do you think should be the answer should you be going with the neurovascular assessment and then with the slab application a cast application or this is totally dislocation immediate surgery should be the key or or an immediate open reduction needs to be done so 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 may I know your response because again you know real emergency room scenarios we have to take that stat decisions no help from friend no help on whatsapp no help on facebook is uh, you know allowed here so 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 himal somya jayant how did you tackle this type of a question so so what was your response when you saw this question so so can i have some inputs from you guys well 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 as, as you are responding let me just tell you also so what is a slab and a cast see see this image so what has been applied here is just a plaster on one side of the uh calf and an and ankle so this is a slab now if you complete the other leftover part also even if this dorsal part is also covered by a plaster a plaster would be found to completely encircling the limb this would be called a cast so in a cast you have a circumferential plaster in a slab two third of the circumference would be plaster so cast would be circumferential okay and slab would be covering two third circumference so these were the first two options that i suppose you were given apply the slab apply the cast okay fibula intraarticular this is intraarticular fibula only okay fine and fracture of medial malleolus yeah there is a small chip fracture here but yeah it is very much possible that in your exam you could have a fracture higher up also this is also possible but very difficult for me to fetch the same x ray okay so so it was a bimalleolar fracture with a dislocation of the ankle what i suspect the x ray you got so so you feel this is the answer immediate surgery okay open reduction no 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 i'll tell you the best answer here will be a slab ap close reduction and slab application we never apply cast because this would lead to compartment syndrome so this option is out see a cast is encircling in a circumferential manner there is no space of expansion allowed with this high velocity injury some swelling will be expected so you put up a cast straight away there will be compartment should be going with immediate surgery no why no i'll tell you because the patient has already sustained high velocity trauma and this high velocity trauma has been the first hit to the patient you do surgery this is going to add on a second hit and two hits so early are going to destabilize and kill the patient so no fun doing with the ankle if the patient is not left i'm sure you would have heard of a concept called damage control surgery or damage control orthopedics also same what this concept says when a high velocity trauma has given you a first hit never move to definitive surgeries immediately stabilize the patient first by reducing these fractures waiting for a while an immediate open reduction could have been the answer when close reduction fails so here what i would simply say concerning open reduction so if the close reduction fails then we move to open reductions and here after open reduction 
we generally go with external fixations. We go with external fixations when we find the close reductions to be unstable. Okay, and this is how an external fixator looks like. It can be across applied across the ankle also to hold the bones in its place if the reduction is unstable. Otherwise, many a times even in the slab the reduction will be stable. So this can be taken as the first step. And if this fails, one can go to open reduction and apply an external fixator to hold the fracture. Fine. Compartment syndrome. Uh, I'll take it up in one of the anagadmi class. Not much time here to explain everything to you regarding compartment. But this is one of the complications with the tight cast, and the cast would become tight because of swelling here. Clear enough, guys? Okay. Uh, I think you are clear with this modification of external fixator called Lizarov also. That's what an Lizarov is. I think you are clear with the principle of this Lizarov also. That's distraction histogenesis. So basically, you distract two parts of a bone using this Lizarov apparatus. And when you distract at a very, very fixed and a slow rate, that is one millimeter per day, what you find at this distraction site is new bone formation. So that is how an Elizarov lengthens up a limb. I would just like to let you know there is a modification of Elizarov that I have shown in this picture and that is applied on this patient. So this fixator can also distract a bone. So there is a fracture here. You can move it apart, distract at this rate of 1 millimeter per day to help in new bone formation at this site. So can anyone help me out? What is the name of this fixator? And mind you why I am asking this. Last year in PG paper, this picture was there. You have to pick up from this image the name of this fixator. So this is a modification of this Lizarov ring fixator. Okay, so please try help me out. Let me know the name for this particular fixator that you see in this image. Uh, this is a modification of the Lizarov. Helps you out with distracting two pieces of bone. Okay, these, these two pieces slide, distract a fracture site. So this particular fixator, I'll tell you not a problem. We call it a railroad fixator. So this railroad fixator is just a modified version of Elizarov, easier to apply and handle because an Elizarov is not easy to fix and apply. Clear enough guys, clear enough, clear enough, clear enough. The third one, again in emergency room scenario. Crush injury in the limb. Okay. And, and in this crush injury, a fixator was shown to you. Like this. A fixator like this was shown to you, I suppose. So from this fixator, you have to pick up the best answer. That is the femur fracture fixed with Lizro. It's a tibia fracture fixed with a spanning fixator, femur fracture with a spanning fixator, periarticular knee fracture with a spanning fixator. So just the important point I'd like to brief you. Normally an external fixator is applied across in a single bone. This is a conventional external fixator. So the pins will be there spanning across a single bone like tibia here. Now sometimes you have an injury around a joint like this is the knee joint, this is the thigh, this is the leg. So now you would need to repair this area, debride this area, dress this area. But in order to stabilize the knee you will have to fix some pins in the femur and some pins in the tibia. So this is the thigh. This is the leg. So there are some pins going in the thigh and some pins in the leg. And they are connected with each other. So when a fixator spans a joint, this is where you call it a spanning fixator. So spanning fixator will be applied for injuries that will be periarticular. Yes, Himal, that will be periarticular around a joint. So that tells you the whole story. So the image was showing you a periarticular knee fracture fixed with a spanning fixator. Clear enough guys? Clear enough with this also? Okay. Moving a little further. Six years old child. He sustained an injury and an x-ray was shown to you. You have to pick up the best set of the complications from this x-ray. Now again you can see a very vital point. An examiner could have straight away told you the diagnosis in this x-ray. 
this is the catchy area and he would have told you that this is a particular fracture what complications you see in this fracture but have you just noticed no straight questions are coming to you now directly because the examiner wants you to see these images start interpreting the images and reading the x-rays on your own so please start developing that attitude in case you are still lacking it now indirect hints you know you find in the question so if it is less than 10 years old child being talked of and if it is an injury being talked of around the elbow in this age group it either has to be fracture supra condylar humerus or it has to be a fracture of lateral condyle humerus these are the only two important fractures you can have around the elbow in this age group apart from a dislocation of the elbow so these are the three most important pediatric injuries in this age group at the elbow this fracture supracondylar humerus would be going through the olecranon fossa so if you could see the olecranon fossa intact and the joint reduced it had to be a fracture of lateral condyle of humerus so that is what is being talked of here a fracture of lateral condyle of humerus in this x-ray now this fracture of lateral condyle of humerus is notorious to go into non union and show you cubitus valgus and i'll tell you why also but before that uh before that let me draw your attention to these points cubitus varus and myositis ossificans you find it in fracture supracondylar humerus compartment syndrome and vic you find in fracture supracondylar humerus and this malunion and cubitus valgus you also find in fracture supracondylar humerus not cubitus valgus but malunion cubitus varus is what you find in fracture supracondylar humerus so malunion compartment syndrome vic myositis and this malunion only leads to cubitus varus here so these are the complications all of fracture supracondylar humerus the only complications from fracture lateral condylar humerus were non union and cubitus valgus and this is the answer why this fracture goes into into non union i will de definitely like to let you know this also see what is attached over this lateral condyle of the humerus is a big muscle mass that is the common extensor origin all the extensors of forearm they arise from this lateral epicondyle of the humerus and this is radius so this is the lateral side now if there will be a fracture and these muscles are going to contract they are going to pull this fragment rather they rotate this fragment by 180 degrees see this picture so this will be the capitulum here so this is the capitulum okay and this is the fragment fracture fragment you are finding it very small but let me tell you when you will open it you will find it to be large because this is totally cartilage small children most of the bone is cartilage and cartilage is not well visible on the x ray but i hope you can see it totally rotated from the original direction so this is how generally these fractures present to you the fragment is pulled and rotates so you have to open it to reduce it then let me tell you this lateral condyle of humerus tends to be lying within the capsule so what i have drawn in black color is the capsule and inside the capsule you will have the synovial fluid so this fracture of lateral condyle humerus tends to be intracapsular see medial epicondyle is outside the capsule lateral condyle is within the capsule and if you don't believe me you can feel it feel your medial epicondyle it will be very prominent feel your lateral epicondyle it will be hardly prominent because this is within the capsule now whenever anything is within the capsule it is going to be lined by synovial fluid now what our research has told us that this synovial fluid inhibits calus formation 
So because of these reasons that the synovial fluid here inhibits scalar formation and the common extension rotates the fragment, this is a fracture notoriously shown, known to show non-union. So that is the most important complication uh, we have over here. Okay, and 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 it's not that it's only the pediatric age group where non-union occurs. Uh, Umesh, the fracture is predominantly seen in the pediatric age group. Even in adults, it can lead to non-union. And yes, children have growth pending. So when non-union occurs, the end result of non-union in children in these fractures sometimes even in adults generally tends to be cubitus valgus deformity at the elbow so this is cubitus valgus that you see over here and let me tell you the ulnar nerve goes from the medial side like this so what i have drawn in this red color is the ulnar nerve and you can very well see that the elbow will be going into valgus this ulnar nerve is going to be stretched so i need not tell you the end result of cubitus valgus tends to be a tardy ulnar nerve palsy so that would have been another part of the combination in the complications could have been but i hope you are clear with the problems in fracture lateral condyle of humerus will go into non-union non-union will lead to cubitus valgus and cubitus valgus would lead to a tardy ulnar nerve palsy so these are the sequence of complications you find in this fracture of lateral condyle of humerus so umesh clear with your query clear so mohammad Himal, Jant, Umesh, clear enough with everything till here? Now, one of my favorite questions here. A middle is female, she's been com coming to you with multiple swellings in the hand. This x-ray was shown to you, something like this. And you were asked about the likely diagnosis. So there is something wrong here, there is something wrong here, there is something wrong here. There are multiple lesions you may see in the hand. I'll mark them up for you. So see this phalanx, see this phalanx, see this phalanx. So do I need to tell you guys, when you're talking of a tumor in the hand, please have no doubt, it has to be oleous disease. Because what you could see were multiple enchondromas. Let me tell you, a tumor in the hand is enchondroma unless proved otherwise. The commonest site for enchondroma is hand. And the commonest bone tumor in the hand is enchondroma. So please have no doubt. That hand x-ray meant this is one chondroma and multiple lesions meant this is oleous disease. So that is how this was the answer. But I'll certainly like to tell you how other things look like and why they were not the Brown's tumors or something else that could be multiple. I'll just show you. See this first image, multiple lytic areas. So these are the multiple Brown tumors. Now these brown tumors you tend to have in hyperparathyroidism and when in hyperparathyroidism you tend to have multiple lesions this is where you call it as osteitis fibrosa cystica and mind you they are not brown here they are brown on the biopsy because they are containing blood these cysts. In hyperparathyroidism, there is a lot of bone resorption. A heavy bone resorption leads to bleeding in the bones. That is what generates these cysts. Bleeding gives them the brown color on the biopsy. And on x-ray, they look like multiple lytic areas, multiple brown tumors. Now, if you see here a flat skull on a CT and these multiple lesions here. So these are the multiple lesions of fibrous dysplasia. Fibrous dysplasia is known to involve flat bones like skull, ribs. Here the diagnosis is labeled as a McCune Elbright syndrome. And what you will classically observe, it will be single side of body having all the lesions. So chest involved on the right side, skull involved on the right side. So it will be only one side of the body having the lesions in McCune Albright syndrome. Clear enough? And if you see an osteochondroma here, an osteochondroma here, an osteochondroma here, an osteochondroma here. So what you are finding over here is 
मल्टीपल ऑस्टियोकॉन्ड्रोमास दिस इज मल्टीपल ऑस्टियोकॉन्ड्रोमेटोसिस दिस पर्टिकुलर कंडीशन इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड बाय दिस नेम डायाफाइशियल एक्लेशिया so this is diaphyseal ecclesia multiple osteochondromatosis so just sharing you with you some some tumorous conditions or tumor like conditions where you could have multiple lesions in the bone multiple osteochondromas diaphyseal ecclesia multiple fibril dysplasia mccune albright syndrome okay and we don't call it multiple fibril dysplasia we call it a polyostotic multiple bones and also polyostotic fibril dysplasia and we have multiple brown tumors that is osteitis fibrosa cystica so clear with these multiple lesions and multiple enchondromas in the hand oleous disease clear enough guys my last one to discuss with you a new net with multiple fractures maybe in utero is come to you so what could be the likely diagnosis i think this was a spotter very easy to answer i didn't need not tell you the answer here i think you guys very well know this is osteogenesis imperfecta case I think you're already familiar with what's osteogenesis imperfecta. Uh, it's a connective tissue disorder because collagen is abnormal, but it also comes under this category, skeletal dysplasia. This word skeletal dysplasia means dysplasia means abnormal skeleton. So the skeleton is abnormal in skeletal dysplasias. Okay, and then collagen tends to be a part of the connective tissue, so some people also call it as a connective tissue disorder. Synonymous. Now the basic defect you find over here is in this protein collagen. There is a faulty cross-linking in the collagen, so the collagen is abnormal. This is what makes the bone brittle and they fracture easily. That is what happens in osteogenesis imperfecta. Ninety percent of these patients will be found to have a genetic mutation, this collagen type one, the A one A two genes, and this results in an abnormal glycine substitution in the pro collagen molecule pro collagen is the precursor of collagen so in this molecule glycine gets substituted abnormally so the cross linking is affected so collagen is abnormal so bones tend to be brittle so people tend to come to you often with pathological fractures and the classical point about these pathological fractures multiple so what i feel that what happened you know to the examiner as he was preparing your orthopedic questions somewhere down the line he searched on google this word multiple so these conditions they all popped up he picked up this x-ray multiple multiple enchondromas oleous disease multiple brown tumors fibril dysplasia and multiple 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 brittle fractures brittle bones multiple pathological fractures osteogenesis imperfecta so this was an exam full of multiples and i hope you are going to score also in multiples so i hope you were able to pick up all these answers now i would just like to tell you that since the problem here is with this protein collagen collagen is present in all these areas teeth sclera bone ligament skin so these are the areas that are involved dentigen genesis imperfecta blue sclera we're going to talk of all the details in the an academy classes but right now here since this less of time i'm just going to speak about the the, the picture in the bone see this classical x-ray see these bones so badly deformed so this is how an x-ray of osteogenesis imperfecta would look like there will be multiple areas having pathological fractures often bilateral and bones will be badly deformed in fact what these bones need for the treatment at times multiple osteotomies to correct the alignment and then putting a nail in bone for fixation this particular method of treatment we often call it even scientifically we use this term see kebab treatment see i am going to cut these bones and make them line as one line and i am going to thread a nail through these bones so these small chips of bones would look like that see kebab that sometimes we enjoy as a dish so see kebab treatment of these multiple osteotomies and then putting a nail is what is required for this condition of osteogenesis imperfecta and there's a silence classification 
for this condition of since is imperfecta different types tend to have different features if you can remember up to level 4 that's good enough which is lethal in perinatal period this autosomal recessive form is type 2 or this type 3 autosomal recessive form also is bad one fractures are there right at birth but the good thing is this is a survivable form here the person would not survive lethal and these are relatively mild forms so if you are clear with this four types okay so this person had fractures at birth in utero and he was surviving so you have to tell me the type by the silence classification so quickly tell me the type and i think we can be over with this class so you've gone through this classification with me so everyone could make it out it is was isn't perfect but had the examiner been a tough one he could have put in it which type of ostensions is perfect type 1 type 2 type 3 type 4 so you've gone through the classification do you want me to show you again not a problem so first type mild second type mild uh, sorry first type mild second type lethal third type you have fractures at birth person survives fourth moderately severe form so what was yeah type 3 absolutely right there so this was type 3 osteogenesis imperfecta full marks full marks homage full marks wonderful so so i hope you're clear with now this particular condition also wonderful enough wonderful enough so if you wish to learn more from me please take your plus subscription or take the iconic subscription to maximize the benefit i think you know an academy prep letter a joint venture you can have integrated things that affect much low cost just sharing with you some important things for you the need pg 2023 preference this is the deal for you you can use this code ortho life in case you wish to avail your 10 percent off uh, price rise is coming up soon so use the code get your discount and subscribe timely this is the test calendar okay in case you know you are you are plan to give some tests for the fmg uh, this particular batch with the previous year mcqs is also coming up in case you wish to attend this batch then this next 2023 exam you know likely it's going to be the next i think a subject wise batch is also coming up so please block your dates we have the previous year question bank available with us so you wish to practice the previous year questions and academy is just the best place for it the UPSC batch is about to be launched so just enroll fast use the code and take it off first prof people also watching feel free to join make sure your basics go strong right from the first prof so join timely i'm sure you're aware of this feature also to daily practice papers every class you attend you finish attending you can assess your knowledge by these daily practice tests so these are the need piece subscription prices very very economical so go ahead and quickly subscribe and as you subscribe please don't forget to use this referral code if you like the class ortho life as you subscribe so that's all from my side guys any 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 more query from your side you you wish to discuss with me before i end the session so i hope i could show you some classical images i could tell you the explanations to these real emergency room scenarios so just in case you know you have any exams left over please please be well prepared to deal with emergencies real situations life situations and please get into that habit of reading the x-rays in orthopedics no escape in case you are not comfortable dealing with the x-rays uh, the commonest organism causing osteomyelitis staph aureus okay clear vivek vivek was this question also there please let me know was this question also there i i, I don't suppose this was there. i think this is just a question you've asked for your clarification so it's it's staph aureus that is the commonest organism that leads to bone infection so i hope that clears it out mechanism of ankle fracture umesh uh, okay uh, vivek sickle cell disease if person has sickle cell disease in this case it will be salmonella right and umesh there is a special class i've already taken on ankle fractures you can search it on the unacademy platform 
I have discussed the whole mode of injury in ankle fractures and it's a large Hansen classification we use for ankle fractures that's based upon mechanism of injury so that will be explained in that particular class on ankle injuries so you can search it up by my name and you'll be able to find it. it's a free special class there on the unacademy platform so we'd we'll be looking for having you some of you on unacademy use the referral code ortholife good night for now bye bye